What's up you guys, I'm back with another video and in this video I'm going to teach you the basics of Python for the beginners who have no programming experience whatsoever to help you get started with Python programming. So let's get started. So Python is a general purpose interpreted high level programming language which is currently very popular in the world and it is a very versatile language that you can use to do different things like web development and software development and also machine learning, data science and stuff like that. So you can do a lot with Python and it is one of the simplest and easiest programming languages to get started. This video is going to be a short tutorial of Python. Yes, you can't possibly learn everything there is to learn about Python within one video of 5-10 minutes but I'm going to cover as much ground as possible in this video. So the goal of this video is to provide maximum value as much as I can in a short span to give you an understanding of the basic ideas and concepts in Python and you can can build more complicated systems and software by combining these simple ideas and concepts. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Alright, so first of all, let me open my terminal and we'll go into my desktop directory. We're going to start a new file called hello.py and I'm going to open that file in Sublime. You can use any text editor right now for the sake of simplicity, I'm using Sublime text editor. All right, usually when we are learning a new programming language, we start by printing hello world. So in Python, we'll do the same by using, what this will do is basically print hello world on your console. And this is so simple compared to Java, you have to write a lot of lines of code. You have to start a class and you have to create a public static void main function and stuff like that. In Python, all you have to do is print hello world and you execute it by going to the terminal and saying Python hello.py. It will print hello world on the console as you can see here. So that's how simple it is to get started with Python. However, this is the, I can call this a script because all it is doing is executing whatever is there here. But that's not the way we are going to use Python. We're going to define a main function and we are going to give it more structure. So this is how you define a function in Python and you can call if name. So what this will do is it will come here and it will start the execution by calling the main function. So let's try it again. And yes, it still works. So this is the way you define a function in program. Def, def is the keyword that you'll use to define a function in program. And this is the name of the function. And inside these parentheses, you can include the arguments that you want to supply to this program. All right, so the other way to use Python is to start the Python interpreter, which is basically the Python shell here. You can do the same thing and you don't have to every time come and execute Python, right? You can just call print here and print whatever you want. You can do all sorts of things in the Python shell, but however, for this video, we're going to use a proper Python program and I'm going to help you guys uh, sort through it. We can also change the permissions for the Python program by doing chmod. What this will do is it will give the execution permission for hello.py. All right, so now if I do dot slash hello.py, it will execute the program. So we don't have to call Python hello.py every time. What this line does is it tells the shell to execute this file using this particular Python binary. So this is how you basically define a function. Now let's go here and let's define another function called um, say hello. And it takes an argument called name. This is the simplest version that I'm showing you. So in main what I can do is I can call hello with the name which can be the sys.argv of one. So sys is a built-in Python module. This is how you import modules in Python. Uh, one of the reasons why Python is so famous is because it has wonderful modules and libraries for all sorts of functions that you want to do. So your job becomes less because you can just import these libraries and use those functions to accomplish your task. So let's do this and let's try and execute this function. It will say an error because I haven't supplied an argument. But now if I give a b tube, it will say hello a b tube because what is happening here is the main function is being called and the main function is in turn calling say hello function with a sys.argv of one. ARGV is the argument array and uh, one is the index of the argument. I'll go into more detail about arrays later. Uh, for now you can say that say hello of name this argument called abtube is passed here and it is calling hello name. The other way to use this is uh, to use python f strings which is a new feature in python and it is very useful. You can just add an f before the string and you can use this sort of formatting 
and it will do the same thing. So this is how you basically define a function and this is how you import a module. These are the most basic stuff that I can tell you about Python programming. So now what we can do is rather than directly calling say hello, I can call, I can store this value in a variable called name. Now name is a variable. In Python language, you don't have to define a variable type. In other languages, you might be used to defining a variable as an integer or a string or something like that. In Python, you just have to give a name of the variable and equal to is the assignment operator. So you can use this to assign anything to name, right? If, if I say, say hello of name, say hello, pass the name and it'll print say hello of ABT. Now what happens here is this name is being passed as an argument to this function. So this is the way you define a variable and you can also do anything else, right? You can make name equal to one, two, three, four. It'll say hello, one, two, three, four, because now the name has a number called one, two, three, four. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is Python doesn't have a specific type for the variable. Name can be assigned a string, a number or anything that you want, right? Now let's get rid of this argument and let's just give it a random string called abt. So this is a string name is a string now and you can do different things with name. So now what you can do is you can use a lot of string functions like s uh, let's say for now name dot. So these are all the string functions that you have. You can use any of them. Let's say lower. It will return the lowercase name. So ab which is capital will now be in lowercase. Yep. So this is how you can use functions. So if there's any object, you can use a dot operator to see what functions it has. And you can use any function that you want to use, right? You can use upper as well. Let me show you upper. Now it'll be all AB tube capital letters. So this is how you can uppercase or lowercase. There are a lot of functions for that. You'll have to refer to Python documentation to understand what kind of functions you can use or the other way is to just print DIR. So like I said, if you have the Python shell and you define a string, you can use the dir method to list all the direct all the functions that you can all the things that you can do with that right so if i do dir of a you can see these are all the things that i call i can call on it i can call is alnum is alpha is ascii split line split all these functions are can be used with that string and you can use that with any object in python programming so that's a handy tip apart from that these this is a string and you can see the length of the string by using the len function, which is a universal Python function. Now, if I do len of name, it will return. Yeah, so as you can see, it says hello six because six is the length of the name. So list in Python is basically the, how you represent arrays. So this is how you represent an array in Python. And an array is basically a list of elements, right? You can add a lot of elements in that array. You can add, uh, Let's say here only you can add one, two, three, four, five. So you can give comma separated values. Now I have five numbers in that, in that array and we can call this uh, numbers and we can see that there are five numbers in this array and we can just print the length of that array and it will say five. And what we can do is we can print that array itself. Yeah, you can see that array here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just moving on to the terminal because I think these things can be better demonstrated in the shells. So what I'm going to do is I'm clear this and I'm going to start a new Python shell, right? So now what we can do is I can define an array called numbers and I can say numbers of one, two, three, four, five. All right. If I do numbers of zero, I'll get the first element. If I do numbers of minus one, I'll get the last element, right? And in Python programming, you can do slice, you can use something called slicing to slice the arrays. Basically, if I use uh, first colon three, this will give me zero to three, right? Zero, one, two, the first three elements of the array. All right, so let me define another function here called define say hi of name. So the difference between these two functions is this says hi, this says hello, right? Now what we can do here is let's assign a name to show you the conditionals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do if how this works is this is the simplest syntax that you can use. If is the keyword double equal sign means you are comparing name to this string and if they match and if return, if this returns true, this function is called and if it returns false, this will be called. So this is how you execute conditionally in Python and let me demonstrate that. So now if you can see name equal to ABTube, this is exactly the same as this, 
so the say hello function will be called so as you can see it's hello ab tube now if i even change one character to small t let's say i have changed the capital t to small t this won't match and the second function will be called or uh, i forgot to save it so yeah yeah so hi ab tube is called and this is how you can basically execute things conditionally if this condition is true let me just remove this and if if i say true here so in python you can use true or false so if true say hello or say hi so now the first one will be executed and if i say false second one is executed and you can combine these operators in any way that you want to i'm just explaining to you how these operators work and what kind of syntax they use later on you can use all sorts of combinations and your ideas to build complex systems using these simple concepts so next thing i want to touch up on is dictionary dictionary is a data type in python which includes key value pairs basically it is an object you can call it an object or you can call it a hash map you can store key value pairs in it so what i mean by key value pair is if i say uh, abhi it'll say uh, one and if i say ab tube it'll say two so what this will do is basically uh, this key will be mapped to this value and this has a constant access time so if i access name of abhi and i'm going to print that it'll say one this is how you can use objects in python let me bring this to the next line to make it clearer basically in javascript and stuff like that you're going to use objects and json so in python they are the equivalent of those objects is dictionary and this is how you can use any key will be mapped to any variable and you can access it using that key name so in python you can use for loops and while loops let's call name is an array of one actually let's just call name an array of abhi let's call this names and it will have 10 occurrences of abhi in it so let me actually show you that so you can use for in loop for name in names what this will do is it will iterate on this loop and for every single element of that array will be stored in name and you can execute the function let's say say hello of name so now it will execute this 10 times because abhi is there 10 times so this loop will go on 10 times right if i execute this as you can see 10 times it has printed the same thing because i am executing this in a loop so this is how you can execute statements repeatedly and one thing i forgot to touch upon is the basic arithmetic operation so let me do that now you can let's start with two numbers a equal to 2 and b equal to 4 and you can do all sorts of arithmetic using a plus b will give 6 a minus b will give minus 2 and a into b will give you 8 and actually let's do b by a will give you 2 So this is how you can use all sorts of arithmetic operations in Python language which are one of the most basic things that I forgot to mention. So yeah that's about it and you can use another thing called type to see what is the type of that thing and type of a is integer and you can use type of string let's say type of string a we'll say string so that's that's how you can say the types of any any object that you are playing with apart from that uh, the only thing is in the strings in python strings you can use single quotes or double quotes there's no restriction on that but whichever one you decide to use try to make it consistent across all your programs and you know stick to it because consistency is more important and it is a matter of your personal choice all right so that's it for this video i hope you learned something from it and if you did hit that like button and if you have any other questions you can comment them down below or connect with me on instagram i'm happy to answer your questions and lastly don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel because i have a lot more helpful content coming out for you guys so that's it thanks for watching